Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Anna Main is here so we can start. Mm. Hi, Anna. Hey. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Just teasing. Um, so, I, I, I kind of a general um, getting together, talking about things today. Um, and uh, anyway, I have things on my mind. We'll see what you have on your mind. I thought we'd go around and just kind of do this thing that I like to do where people say one thing they're bringing and one thing they want to get from this time together. Who wants to start that off? I will. Okay. So I am bringing some encouraging news about discussion boards and how to make them work for actual conversations. And I really want to get some insight onto how to do virtual book clubs. All right. So what discussion boards and how, say more about what you're bringing again, discussion boards and- yeah, Well, because we're all remote, right? And everybody, yeah. everybody's doing discussion boards. I, because everybody's been forced to do remote, it's been wonderful for my discussion boards because suddenly they're discussing things and having conversations on them. And then I don't have to deal with that stuff in the synchronous classes. So then uh -huh. they're finding that there's more stuff happening. So it's like, it's building. So now we've got all of these great conversations happening and it's it's really quite rich and, and I'm quite enjoying it. Cool. Okay, great. Karen, we're doing a quick welcome. We're doing a quick go around to say, um, what you're bringing and what you want to get out of this time together tonight. Um, Chris, you're next. Uh, what I'm bringing is... Um, it doesn't, it could well, be fruit, it could be anything. <laughs> sorry? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was... Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm bringing actually. I mean, I'm bringing, uh, I'm still standing, I guess. So yeah. That's, uh, and, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested in talking about uh, the idea of a portfolio on youth voices. Cool. Paul Hankins. Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I've, I've got like this weird light over my shoulder and it's bothering it's, it's, me. It's fine. It's okay. Um, so actually what I'm bringing is the conversation that uh, we had with Paul uh, this morning. That was really nice uh, to have him Google meet in with us in uh, Sellersburg, Indiana with um, uh, four students. Uh, we were thinking about starting a ambassador program to Youth Voices and uh, getting together like a small little pack of the students that would help kind of guide what that would look like for us because when we when we roll into Youth Voices and now comment, we roll in with uh, my 85 juniors who are in AP Lang and my 60 seniors who are in AP Lit. That's a lot of that's a lot of folks to roll in with, and we just wanted to have like a a small little group of, of students that help to guide that with us uh, to make sure that we're commenting as much as we are um, responding as much as we are commenting and making sure there's a balance in there and what that would look like and what our responsibilities look like. And Paul kind of helped to, to walk us through that. Um, so, oh, And what do you hope to get? Or is that a get to? <laughs> well, those, uh, you know, those four students that were with us this morning, they are committed. And, um, you know, it's kind of like uh, they're one, bring one, you know, they're going to go and talk to um, some of their friends that they think would be a good addition to the group. But Paul, what do you want to learn from this group here tonight? Learn from this group tonight? Yeah. Well, I tell you, um, I, I really need to get behind like how to set up a discussion post in Youth Voices. Like when I get back there and I see um, a mainframe or something that I'm, I'm just not familiar with using that as much as I am like putting up an update or something like that or tagging friends. But getting in there and seeing like how to put a title or I got to put in some, you know, so I'm just, that's where I'm a little upside down. I don't, I don't know how to do that. And because I don't, I don't know how to explain that to a student. So I'd, I'd like to see that. Great. Anna. Um, hi everyone. Um, I think I am bringing, I have, I feel like I have this like really nervous energy. I just got off a call with a student and we were conferencing about uh, his college essays and stuff. And we were reminiscing, I had him as a junior last year when COVID hit. And so 
he was just like, he had all this nervous energy and I feel like I just absorbed it somehow. That's what I'm bringing. Um, and there's two things I'd love to like get into tonight. One is definitely portfolios like Chris mentioned. And the other is um, the, the groups aspect of Youth Voices and the, the book club. My students have, so, we sort of fell off the wagon a little bit. So I'd love to um, just hear what people are doing and uh, try and get my students back into the, the book club. Cool, Karen? I am bringing um, a But you're song. still standing too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, the thing is I'm still sitting in front of the screen. Um, mm. the, uh, I'm bringing um, uh, some amount of satisfaction that my kids, that I've, that I've got the um, Youth Voices uh, um, book responses going, literature responses going in my classes. Um, like it's got a place in the routine. And then um, I like, it, and I'm feeling good about the now comment work that we did 936 comments on um, two pieces by Baldwin, uh, James Baldwin. And um, what I'm, uh, it's what I'm bringing and what I'm what you, trying what to get. <clears throat> two, three things. One, uh, I'm um, hoping that um, reading, we're gonna start um, reading Beale Street, uh, if Beale Street could talk and I'm worried if, I'm worried that, um, uh, I wonder if kids are gonna have fatigue with the commenting, they better not. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and, also how they will encounter the text because it's so beautiful. Like when you click on the title um, of Beale Street, you, uh, you can see the book as it appears in the printed book, which is more beautiful than, um, than in the format for commenting. So I'm wondering what their aesthetic, what their attachment to the book will be like if they can't turn the pages and... Um, Da, da, da. And then another thing I really need is help, um, like some help with um, under, like how to grade, like I'm using the Google Classroom and I have them pasting in their, the um, pasting in links to their now comments or to their youth voices. But um, anyway, it's a lot to, go back and forth with assessment um, uh, when I have multiple platforms. Because uh, they're turning things in more than once, right? In a sense. Is that yeah. How it feels? yeah. And then um, also uh, the skills. Um, is that, like I missed a couple of meetings, but uh, um, could the skills be partly for purposes of assessment and uh, in teachers' hands or will we, or are we like, like- The short answer is yes, but we have to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> cut you off. Was that everything or is there more? That's enough. <laughs> sure. So um, one of the things I hope to do is reintroduce um, profiles and activity pages to address Karen's notion of, um, or I, I, all of our notes of where, where do you see the work? How do you collect it? Where, do you, where can it be? Um, and, and some of the problems we've solved around all of that. Um, the, um, and moving toward um, a, what I wanna call a working portfolio that I have an example of now. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to kind of bridge between those two in some way and hopefully address some of your issues and concerns and so forth. Stephanie, um, since you're sort of off the, uh, you were, you had something different than Youth Voices and Now Comment. Do you want to talk about what, what you brought up there at the beginning? Whoop, you're muted. 
There you uh, go. Yeah, no problem. It also, I think it relates to youth voices because we like to see you know, conversations happening there as well. Mm -hmm. With the idea of creating um, a dialogue space, one of the things I learned uh, with everybody being remote and me being really remote, being you know, 1900 miles away from my students, is that if I give really good parameters for what I expect from a discussion post and a response, the discussions become so rich that they don't have to be, it, it, it's really been fun. And I think you could see, you'd be able to see some of that on Youth Voices as well um, in the discussions that, that are happening there with the different things. Um, so what some of the parameters I've given is if you're going to write a response to something, it needs to be about 200 words. Not a lot. These, so, this is the college students you're working college with? College students, but I think it would okay. work for high school as well. You know, mm -hmm. about 200 words is not a lot. If you're in a classroom and you're having a conversation about a topic and somebody says something, our response is going to be, you know, a couple of minutes, which is going to be a couple hundred words. And so in, in, say, in putting that parameter out there, saying if you're going to comment, let it be a couple hundred words and talk about how, how it makes you think, how it makes you feel, how it relates to your life. And that, that begins to start these conversations that happen in, in these virtual spaces. And it's kind of exciting to see because they're not face-to-face. -face. And the same thing with these voices, these, you know, these people are not face-to-face, -face, but they can still have these interchanges that can be really powerful if we kind of help shape how to write a really good response to a discussion post. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to follow up on that? Okay, I guess not. <laughs> I said it all, mic drop. I just deposited my win. No, I want to look up your um, your students' work on Youth Voices. No, no, she's she there she because on my Youth college. Voices. I've got the college students, and so my college students have their students on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, all right. The, Let's let's get into it a little bit. Um, I, how would it make sense to start with my kind of just showing some stuff, and then you make sure you get your issues in here? Does that all make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and so I heard what. Anyway, yeah. So. Um, I'm on members right now. And I, I just want to remind you because this changed this, this year that the way you can switch to an account is go to members, right? And then you can become that student, right? Which is, you, you probably find many uses for that. And I'm sorry to be Brendley again, but I'm Brendley again. All right. Um, and here's what I have set Brendley up so that all of her now comment comments come to her activity page, right? I have not done that yet, Karen, with your kids because I want you to see the kind of mess it creates and then how to deal with that mess before it happens. You know, so you need to be ready for it. Got it. But we can set you up pretty fast. Um, anyway, so on this page, youth can come in here and um, you know, you know, write a, a quick update. I was talking to Sam Reed and he was looking at this page and he asked, how did Brenda Lee be, feel, end up feeling this ownership over her work here that you can kind of see? And I think it's about dailiness that every day she goes in and she uses the docs function to do a, do a journal entry. And then she comes here and does this, you know, this update. And then at the end of class, sort of every day she goes into the book club just to address the book club thing and she writes about the book she's reading right so it's and and by the way karen i know your kids do that on the profile page i wanted to encourage you or nudge you to have them do it in the book club because it ends up on their profile page too yeah like anything you put on the book club ends up on your on your activity stream right so they could start doing that there maybe that'll enliven that book club stuff, people will start finding each other, right? 
Um, no small matter every, I mean, no small matter in that at first, by the way, so anything that you do in docs here ends up here as well. So all of her, so these are all of her now comment comments. And then, so it ends up being a rather long stream, right? And I've talked about this before, but we've started to have her bookmark things. So once they get bookmarked, we can go to the bookmark and then ask her to, and I, I have a, a thing to say about this as well. I'll say it as it's, as it's spinning. So uh, many of us have probably done portfolios of sorts. So I, I'd, I'd love for all of us to start to see that activity stream as like the folder where everything gets dropped into. And if there's stuff that happens elsewhere, they can make links to it as well. Um, so if you can start thinking about that as that's, that's this big thick work folder, right? Um, and then the bookmarks begin to be a collection. And I, th I think it needs to happen at least once a week, if not maybe every couple of days. So she bookmarks the now comment comment. Uh, this was for um, Born a Crime. And then she talks about why that one was interesting or important, right? So she did this a couple of days ago. So there's a built-in sort of reflection happening here on here, right? So, so are those attached yeah. to that? Like, is that almost like commenting on a post? Are they nestled together kind of? Yeah, so she, she bookmarks it and then she goes to the bookmark and just adds a comment to her own to her own update, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and oddly, it ends up on the <laughs> activity page too. I mean, it's good that everything gets collected in the activity page and it's also confusing somewhat. So just to be aware of that. Um, at least, well, yeah, so that's, so for me, the, for me, the, the activity stream and the bookmarking feel like important building blocks for other things that we can do. I, just some feedback or thoughts about that or how it goes. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, the questions or ideas yeah. is, um, so like that's a post that she does on, um, you, let's say it's a discussion post, but then she could also do docs. You can bookmark any of those things. Yes. And then comments uh, comments also show up here. Um, I don't know if I could find so one. So bookmark there. is almost like, is that another name for portfolio in a way? Like this is where this person is saying they're, they're curating their work? Um, yes. I mean, <laughs> it's more like a, more like a, um, it, it's more like a archive. It's, it's somewhere uh, between, it's somewhere between the, the whole archive and then the portfolio. Yeah. It's your beginning to reflect on your work and select some stuff out. So, sorry. Did you want to say it, Karen, differently or? Um, no, that's it. Um, but also, maybe the, like, I'm wondering um, if they, uh, if the reflection on why this thing um, is meaningful, why I've picked it, um, uh, um, especially if um, there's some slender or thick, even thick um, now comments, but still, they're just a comment. Um, like how to avoid um, having them say something that's not that meaningful about what is meaningful to it. One solution would be to give them a, it would be to have them pick a lens. So I think that, so they go through and they bookmark things that um, show their use of evidence or that show their, um, uh, the power of their curiosity, what curiosity does um, for them. Or even for... as, yeah, because, right. Or even as, as simple as find your best 
your three yeah. best yeah. comment yeah. on discussion yeah. posts, yeah. right? Something like that. Yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, could could someone bookmark like their three best posts or something like you just said or best comments? Um, and then could a another student come in and look at that bookmark and make yeah. a comment? So there, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that's that was it. That was the question. Yeah. So you once you go to the to the <laughs> profile right at the top, the bookmarks are there. There's a bookmark title um, tab, mm -hmm. right? And that brings up all the bookmarks that student has made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I wonder if there's a way that I remember you said when you were talking about like what was so exciting about the the skills element was that, you know, students could nominate each other. So like, could you see a student, someone looking at Brenda Lee's work and saying, wow, you like really, you know, respond with empathy or something and then make a comment about that and then do the skills, nominate her for that skill? That feels perfect to me yeah so it starts with some self-selection and some mm -hmm. self-reflection and then peers go in. all this takes time though i know but mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that makes sense to me paul are you there did he jump no okay if you have any thoughts or questions let us know janet's going to be joining us any minute now um as well um and then I, I want to get to your questions. Um, let me let me just show you one more thing though, um, and I can show you this on mine. I've built it out a little more, but there is on the site, and I want to kind of recommend that we start looking at um, these things called web stories, right? And web stories are going to get hot pretty soon. They're kind of hot here and there, because and I think you can see why in a second. But they're they're visual graphic text um, slideshows, basically. And they're relatively easy to make. Um, I And I think, and I, I wanna make a quick argument for the, um, the, the dr drop and drag, I'll show you some of this. And, um, and they kind of intuitively quickly teach the kinds of things you need to know to do, um, all sorts of visual stuff with Adobe and so forth about layers and how layers interact with each other and how images and text can kind of cover each other and uncover each other. Anyway, what I want to propose, and it's not necessary, but um, I started to build out this, um, this, this is um, her, a, 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 what I'm calling a working portfolio, right? So this is her, She's annotating anti racist books portfolio. So, this is her The Hate You Give, right? And then it comes to the, th the third slide here. And each of these links, I'll click it and then we'll come back, but link to, the, um, to her comments on the novel, right? Does that, did, did I do that too fast or is that making some sense? Well, what does it mean one to five, six to 10? Those are the parts of the book. Yeah. Oh, it's it, but within chapters. chapters. Yeah. So within part one, there's like uh, 21, cha uh, 15 chapters. That's it's right. A strange yeah. book. The first part one is 278 pages and then it's a 400 page book. So parts two, three, and four are broken up with the other 200 pages. <laughs> that happens in Baldwin too. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So anyway, so the, the, the idea here is that, and it is based on this, it fits something Karen has wanted to do um, to, to make sort of a visual portfolio mm -hmm. that also links to the work, right? Um, and then the next slide here is her post on Youth Voices that links to that about the hate you give, right? And then it moves on to, we haven't, finish yet but it moves on to the next book she's reading and then she, and then she's going to refer in this case we're going to have her refer to her five most interesting born a crime 
posts, right? I mean, so she could decide what to go there and what, what goes there and what doesn't go there. What I think is nice about this is um, it sits here on her profile. Once she starts making it, she can, she can edit it and add to it. So I, I'm calling this, just to get back to Chris's question about, is that a profile? I'm calling this a working portfolio, right? Um, and eventually they could put these web stories together on a larger page if they wanted to, but it did seem to me that we wait too long to do portfolios and we could kind of get them started earlier this way. Um, all right, as you can tell, I'm sort of excited about this, but I need to hear what you're thinking and, and, and what you need to know. I, let, having said that, let me show you one more thing. So just, just to go to, when you go to create story and I'm, I'm on here as Brenda Lee, right? Um, what, what I have set up here is a six word memoir as a way to learn how to use this. So anybody can go in, go to these three dots over here and duplicate this, right? And that's one of the things that's nice about these stories. And then she can open this in an, in an editor and there are sort of six slides set up for her to do her six word memoir, right? Which could go in that portfolio place as well. And it is opening. Is this making sense what this is? It's a, um, yeah. it's a template. So yep. everybody's, so it's lovely. Everybody's six word memoir would have the same quote unquote themes for like a, the same image, the eggs for the no, six No, you word. would change them. Oh, okay. No, 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 the idea is that you would go in and change the image and the word, right? So. But the text you, box is already there, so you don't have to make it. it right. Yeah. I'm with you. Cool. Um, let me get Janet in here. Can you narrate or can you add audio to these? I don't know that. Okay. Um, I think I've seen some that have, but I don't know how to do it. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, to me, the thing that mm -hmm. seemed to be missing or, I mean, is beautiful. I really like these and I'm, I'm excited. I love this mm -hmm. six word memoir. I definitely want to use that with my students would be if it were a portfolio, if there isn't, it isn't super obvious to me if there's a, a place where in the story, in the web story, you can reflect and sort of add commentary other than on the little panel, which you could do. Um, it's, it, it's very cool. I'm, that's just one thing I no, think about. No, I, if, if, we could, if we could have some audio in here, that would be great. Um, I just don't know how to do it yet. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you figure it out, let me know. <laughs> Um, here's, here's the, here's the thing. One of the things that's nice about this though, is that even, hi, Janet. Hi guys. Okay. Um, going back to stories for a second. Let's say you were, you, you, you haven't, you're not doing an, an anti-racist book portfolio, but you're doing a portfolio about, I don't know, mythology books, right? Um, I think that's one of Karen's students, but <laughs> You could you could grab you could also grab this and just change the title and the and the image as well, and there are there and a, a real good cheat is to to explore the templates and you can copy anything from the templates into your own. So I think introducing this to to youth using the six word memoir as a way to, yeah, you get your six word memoir up, but you also kind of learn about how this how these web stories work. Right. And just to say right at the end, they they prompt you to say, do you want to post this on on Youth Voices now? And then you you quickly hit yes on that and it makes an embed and it creates a discussion post for you on Youth Voices from it, which gives you an embed that you can use elsewhere too, but an embed code. All right. Here's, here's what I'm, 
I'm worried about in, in showing you all of that is that is that like I think all of that learning is great, but it's all about reflecting and building toward a portfolio that that's most interesting to me and what could end up there here oh here's what i wanted to say you could you could i just want to show that you could use this space and this was broken and it, it only recently got fixed so the way before you have your widget here you go up here on the right side and you go to widget settings and you find your um, My Working Portfolio widget. Once you create something in it, you can just use this little edit thing here. And before they put in the web story, they could just make lists here. Oh, here's the books I'm reading, right? Mm -hmm. it's, this could just be text at first. So, but it is a way to begin to collect links to your work, right? Or they could put images of the books here or whatever. Okay. Is this useful, making some sense? Too, too far out? What are you thinking? I'm thinking, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, can you go back to that, um, what you just said? The, the so they, right there. So they could put um, they could put a list of uh, they could make a web story about um, the books that they're reading. So right. the cover would could have the list, and but each of the items on it could would have a link to their youth voices um, discussion on it. It could also yes. So there could be like, I mean. You gotta got, kind of get the vibe of the web story, right? Yeah. That they go by, that they go by in every six seconds. But you can also control, you know, you can go back and forth on them. But yeah, you don't want that much on each slide, right? So okay. yes, they could have the cover, and then they could have a link to their discussion post, and then they could have a link to their comment. That you know, they could think about what to add into that portfolio. Right. Do they know the vibe? Do, um, is our web know. stories a thing yet? Yes. Can we? So, what are some examples? What's an example that they know of? Instagram has has this feature. Although the difference between what Paul has created and the the Instagram story is that um, Instagram story, Instagram, Snapchat. I think it's now a Facebook thing, and then. I think Twitter actually just introduced their own yeah. version. Yeah, and yeah, and and yeah. But they disappeared. You can keep going. There's a whole list. <laughs> yeah, they're this, they're temporary. This is, this is Google's, right? But go ahead, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they'll they'll disappear after 24 hours. What I like about Paul's is there's so much like flexibility, or the the ones on Youth Voices. A lot of what you would see on a lot of what students do, I think, um, or young people do, is like. They'll, re they'll use it to share something they saw somewhere else. I think that's the most common way that, that so if you see a po like a meme that you think is really funny, you can share it on your story very easily. Um, so there's been obviously over, throughout the election, there's been a lot of people like the, you know, sharing stuff about that. Can I just say Twitter should have done that disappearing tweet long ago, <laughs> saying. So and, and, and they're shaped like this, right? Mm -hmm. They're shaped like the phone. So there is that. Um, I, I, I don't know if, if a kid doesn't know about layers and how to, like if they would, and how to find on the right side, how to change the size of, of your text and all of that if they can learn that intuitively or not. Like I know enough to be able to learn it intuitively, but I found it much easier than any other um, visual system. So try it with a few kids and see what they think. And they can make anything they want. They can make as many stories as they want to make, right? But, and then we can, and then, we can then use them for a portfolio of them is, is my notion. But, and yeah. So Paul, or, you said or it's pieces of a portfolio, right? 
Yeah. Is that is that how you're envisioning it? Pieces of a portfolio? Yeah. So, so this isn't the only thing um, the student who I just showed you is doing, um, right? But it is, so this is her portfolio about the anti-racist literature she's reading, right? But there might be a portfolio about the poetry she's reading too, or writing, right? And then mm -hmm. eventually we can, we can embed these, <laughs> these web stories onto a larger page if they want to, and that becomes the portfolio. But I wanted something that would be a working portfolio, something that they can start and be adding to, yeah. and it's not the whole thing at the end, you know, which gets tedious and almost not really what it's about in some way. Mm -hmm. Did you say that when they finish the, the web story, um, they'll get prompted to ask if they want to publish it and then it will, Youth Voices will create a discussion post? That's correct. So if they wanted to do some like meta commentary about their web story, could they edit that discussion post? It could go there, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if they forget, if they don't do that immediately, you can just use the block system and and search for web stories and just put the URL for the, and it'll embed it that way then. So Paul, I was, Lots checking, ways out to do the, this. I was checking out the templates. And um, mm -hmm. so I, I haven't looked too long. Um, so there, like you open a template and there maybe, it looks like, you know, let's say I'm looking at one that has maybe eight slides to it is the mm -hmm. word I'm using. Um, I, I could just do one, right? I could delete and just save one thing, right? I'm not locked into that, right? Yeah. No, you're not. So, well, the, I guess. But again, the vibe of it is, <laughs> I don't know, give me another word. Is more than one slide, right? Yeah, you're telling a story, right? You're telling a story that goes across, right? Uh, I would, I guess but my yeah, question, what are you asking? Yeah. Well, could I use one of those as a featured image on Youth Voices or no? Mm, doesn't work that way. <laughs> In fact, you've, you've got, got a, you've got to add a cover image to the, to the web story also, by the way, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. It, it doesn't work that way automatically. I can look into it. How do they save out? Like what, um, like if so, I, do they, what format are they in? Are they like? MP4? Yeah, I'll show you. Maybe I should. Um, so if, if you go under um, all posts, there's a link to archive of web stories. Right, yeah, I, I went there, yeah. That's, that's how they, yeah, that's how they exist. Did that get you there? I'm thinking about it, yeah. Okay. So um, let me see. Yeah, so see here, story archives. That'll take you to the page where, and all right. I mean, I, I'm also experimenting with presenting curriculum this way with this book lovers annotate thing, but you know, I don't know. Think about different things. This student who is somebody in uh, Kuala Lumpur, um, I, I'm guessing the teacher said, oh, you could do an infogram up there and they put up one page. And so that sort of doesn't work, right? So that's an interesting difference between infograms and, and what this thing is. Is there a written yeah. description of stories on this page or does it just say stories? Because I would look at this as an Instagram post, like right now. Like if I just, I actually took the two students who started our writing club this week um, mm -hmm. on this page and they were just fired up and all excited. Um, it looks Instagrammy to me. So is there a description of what stories is and what the purpose is for this anywhere? If you just, um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, where I, would I find that? I guess so. If I wanted to introduce this story writing, this is pretty new to me. Use too. The so, six yeah. If if you just if you just Google 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 um, 
Google Web Stories, you'll find it. I think okay. there was somebody else making Web Stories and then Google bought them, but that's that's where you can find. So if I wanted to come to this six word template, I would have my students go to that. So I know I'm late, guys. Sorry. So I just no, was... no. So I'm on it now, right? Right. Yeah. And if you just sort of say, okay, so this is what. Let's say they've written it already, right? And then you right. can say, okay, you're gonna you're gonna replace that lollipop with an image and your first word, and then another image and your second word, and then your third okay. word, right? Um, so these are just templates for you to to play with. Right? And that's where we that's where we would find it. So I uh -huh. would direct them to go to stories in that because that would be yeah a really cool way to publish the six word memoirs. And then on. the okay. last page here I made so they can click on it and go here. And that takes you to the, uh, what was it called? The, the, where all the stories are. <laughs> okay. Right. And then, and then they have, you just have to show them that they go to these three dots and hit duplicate. That's the archive, right? Yeah. I think they call it a dashboard. Yep. So they hit the in order to get the, to get the template, they hit the three the three little dots and duplicate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they can replace any of those images and any of that text and do anything they want to. But there's some structure there for them already. Mm -hmm. um, can they delete story? They could delete somebody else's story? They can delete their own. They can't delete somebody else's. You you would be able to, but, they mm. can. but youth students can't. Even, even though I think it says, like, am I on? No, I'm on Asmina. Even, uh, for some reason, it still says they can, but when they try to, a little red thing comes up, says you can't do that. <laughs> I, so I think it's okay to go this, in this depth with this because I think it's useful in different ways. But what are, what are you thinking or how far have we gone from what you need tonight? So bringing my students on for the first time, right? I'm having kids come from a variety of classes. Where should I start? In this, in this year and in, in what we're trying to facilitate? Do I start with that activity or do I start by having them create their, not portfolio, but whatever the- Profile. Their profile. So do we start with the profile first? Is that what you recommend? Somebody else answer, I don't wanna- <laughs> But I did, so I yeah. can't compare it to much else. I oh, think there was more buy-in when they were able to like personalize their profile a little bit. Okay. Even just choosing the avatar and explaining it, I thought was was cool. Well, and it's it's interesting because I don't have my own class, so I'm starting my own club. That's how I'm getting around it. So students who are ultra motivated and then kids that are in courses that I'm teaching, I'll be able to introduce and have already been signed up so I can start putting them in. But I'm looking to develop like 10 to 15 leaders at my site to be like on this. So I, thanks Anna, that's what I'll do first is have them create this place that other students then can go look to and. Yeah, and then the next step is like, I think at least for me was like low stakes comments on other mm -hmm. posts or in the book group. I think that's just like the least stressful. Um, and it's like a, I think it's a, what's like a genre that they're familiar with from social media and from other things. So that's what we did. And I think that they, they've gotten used to this site faster than other students um, I've introduced in years past. And I think it's because uh, it's sort of been this like gradual buy-in. Well, that's what I was asking because I, in ISP, I had more of a direct control than I do now. So I want, I have to structure this differently. Um, in you, in your voices? It, mm -hmm. um, if you go to um, groups and you go to the design group, Anna's. Uh -huh. um, it's a, there's also a link right at the top to a, oh, yeah. to a playlist that tells you how to do it too. I took her stuff and put it into a playlist. Okay, cool. Is it a playlist? Okay, possible. Yeah. We'll do that. It's right mm -hmm. at the top of the. 
of youth voices. Yeah. The um as we went and commented, I would they were so excited to see um we, we actually commented on the student from Malaysia, I think, who was talking about masks and, you know, what they were going through. And we read that whole article and had such a great, it was only three of us, but had this great conversation of in California right now, it's all blowing up. And there's a lot of pushback for the first time where I think everybody was more gung-ho. And now there's a lot more people of like more frustrated with the new lockdown things mm -hmm. happening. And it was really eye-opening they said oh my gosh here's somebody across the world dealing with the same thing I am and having the same conversations like this youth wrote such a great powerful thing about follow your rules if you're going to have them and the, they wrote a little comment back and then they were really empowered They're like other people are going to read it it was just the best introduction so that was cool mm -hmm. I, I'll repeat something I said right before you came um, about dailiness. There's something about asking a youth to go to Youth Voices every day mm -hmm. and, and make, a, make a, an update. Um, it's kind of like dragging them into it, I guess, I don't know. But, it, but it, eventually it, I think they feel some ownership because of that. Um, I could be wrong, but I think that is helpful to do um the, the, the other thing I, sorry the other thing i said to paul's students today is that um like whatever social media you do now like when you put a picture up on instagram consider throwing that on youth voices too right like if you put a comment up about your you're becoming a beauty influencer right <laughs> um make a comment there on youth voices too about that right is that going to be yeah. your second career, Paul? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Can you show I, us? I'm only... still trying to figure out what it, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. Can you show us how to? I saw the Instagram icon when you were looking at the. I don't uh, know how. No, I no. So I'm not saying that. I don't know how to use those Instagram widgets yet. Okay, but what but about I, all I'm other? saying is that in the same spirit that you've put something up on Snapchat, mm -hmm. you know, just try to do that on Youth Voices too, right? I got yeah. you. Yeah. Um, um, I, and I, I want to rush in because in, in this country, and also say that I never ever want to take away from the power of a discussion post that's carefully written and thoughtfully written and developed and and those kind of rich discussions that happen around that, I, you know, I think both things, they contribute to each other. Anna, you said it better than I did. But. Are you saying, are you contrasting the thoughtfulness of the discussion post with the web story? Because I see the web story as a, as a vehicle um, that can have layers and layers. Sure, I, I, I was, con I was, contrasting with the activity post the right. quick update okay. post yeah and, yeah, yeah. The, so 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 we could we could get into book group i'm sorry i keep interrupting you again what do you want to say the activity feed is daunting now i mean is uh it definitely is going to need bookmarking um and also um uh um more and the activity feed i guess in my use will be more paired with the book groups. So um, because some of their certain kinds of posts will be in the book groups. So they'll be able to find them easier. And I will too. Some some of the youth in Indiana figured out pretty fast, Indiana, sorry, Illinois, figured out pretty fast that they could also pin things, right? So you could pin things to the top of your activity stream. Cool. But And I haven't thought that through enough, but that's another possibility um but yeah i don't know um oh mm -hmm. so what i was going to say about the book club is that like we have our kids going in there ev almost every day and just dumping their latest thoughts about their books right but there isn't much interaction happening there is a little bit beginning right so 
And then there, and then to just compare that with the sort of richness, but also just following a guide literature writing that you have your kids doing, Kieran. Um, we want all of that, right? But I don't. Yeah. But there isn't time to do all of that. So, how do we get the book club to be more cared about? I don't have an answer to that, by the way. You have kids. I mean, the, um, you would have kids give book talks on uh, mini videos. Like an invitation, too. I think I'm thinking of second semester, right? For what, you know, of offering this out when we come back at the end of January for the book clubs to be offered to the classes to be kind of like I'm doing the writing club right now. I'm going into the English classes and I'm saying to them, here's this opportunity. Here's these voices. You saw my little commercial I made on Adobe Spark. I was so proud of myself. And it got my kids, you know, other kids like starting to text me and to, and to talk. And I think, Kieran, you're right. Like having a little visual of like, here's a book. Because when I go in there to show it to them, it's just like this list, right? And it's like, I'm not quite sure it's not delineately clear, like almost if there could be a page for each book or a, some kind of cover photo of it or a video introduction for each of the clubs, I think that would be cool or each of the books, I mean. And then maybe even designating, I know we don't like to control it, but maybe having a highlighted book club like a month, kind of like we adults have book clubs, you know, and we just say this month, we're gonna focus on this one, join us. This month, we're gonna focus on this one. It doesn't mean you can't read something and independently comment on it. But in this time of COVID, to me, that the power of the community and reading around a book and my students may be interacting with Paul's or Chris's or, you know, or Anna's, it needs a little bit more of that structure of saying, here's the book we're picking right now. And, and you can choose to do it or not. I wouldn't necessarily sign it, but that might bring more focus is all I'm saying. I agree. And something I've been thinking about, I actually uploaded a couple of short stories on Now Comment mm. because I felt a little overwhelmed by the idea. I like have my plan and it's hard to coordinate with other people. Everyone's on different schedules. So I wondered if something a little like a, taking a smaller bite, like looking at a short story might be a, a nice way to get things started. Like I'm trying to, I'm going to, my plan is to eventually talk to Natalia, who we were have trying to have our kids comment on uh, in the book group originally um, to look at one of the short stories with her class, one of the short stories that we've read. And then maybe, maybe some more conversations will like, but I agree with what Janet was saying. It's you gotta, we need, I, I think a little bit more structure, a little bit more intervention on the part of the teachers might be necessary to get some organic conversations flowing. I don't know like mm -hmm. kick it off I mean I don't think it needs to always mm -hmm. be that way because we want to step away from that oh you have to do this but mm -hmm. yeah to get oh. like the momentum I think yeah um the, so the I, I, by the way I love flip flipgrid right yeah on youth voices <laughs> you can if you if you go there is a you know you can click a a a video thing and, and the video camera comes up and you can record something and then download that and then put that up into an activity feed. It's not that much different than doing a Flipgrid. Um, but so that possibility exists, just to say. Um, Where is that? So if you, on the orange menu, yeah, there's a video recorder. It's just an online recorder, you record it. You have to be aware of where you're downloading it to, but once you have it there, you can then just go to any, go to the activity <laughs> update and then just say, I want to update, I want to add a video here. Right? Okay. Um, husband's hosting a meeting, you probably can hear him. So what, what do we need to go to next? We, and we, not that we have time tonight, but Chris, did this help at all? Uh, 
sort of yeah. go around and say, what are you thinking now? What do you <laughs> guide yeah. me? Good. Um, well, you know, one of the things I was looking at was um, I am just on the web story still. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, I think, can I share a screen? You can. So, you know, let's say I was thinking, here. <laughs> you know, when my students are putting together, like I like to have them uh, put together some kind of sustained research, you know, like mm -hmm. do a topic and stick with it. Like, you know, this could be a way to present a research paper, you know, like, so here's my title. Um, there's some graphic elements that make this kind of, you know, Adobe Spark-like or, or, you know, yeah, whatever. It's competitive. You know, like it's visually pleasing. Um, and then, you know, like um, they could pull out like what's giving your elevator pitch or what's this thing all about? Um, you know, someone they interviewed, they could be, they could maybe get a picture of that person. And then the, so these things then could turn into links. Fair. I'm going to go to the, yep. this kind of thing. You have your kids. These are links, as I saw in some of those things, right? Yeah, you can you can link any element to anything. Yeah. yeah. So I just thought image, like, image or text. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, um, I, I just was thinking that this might be an interesting way um, to present research findings. That's kind of where I was. Cool. So can we go around and hear from others? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm done. No, no, that's cool. Thanks. I like. I really like that idea. Sorry, I'm just gonna interrupt. In terms of like an asynchronous presentation, I, I'm sorry, I know we're overusing the word synchronous and asynchronous. I'll be <laughs> so happy if I never hear those words again. But the benefit of the story is that you could just let a bunch of those like hang out on a page somewhere and let like the students don't need to be there presenting it. Other people could just go in and, and, and watch the stories and interact with them, which is like widens your audience so much, which is really cool. Yeah, cool. And also, also makes it less intimidating for, um, for students to present. I mean, I'm thinking of uh, uh, um, both the web story and the. Well, I'm thinking of the Flipgrid um, book talk given by a student. Um, yeah, uh, the fact that it's asynchronous. It, um, makes it less intimidating for a student to be filming, be, be, be at least publishing a video of themselves. And then the... Um, by the way, by the way you, can, you can easily just put a video on a, on a web story page, by the way. So that would be one way to record. Um, there's got to also be audio there. I, don't, I just haven't figured it out. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, sorry. Did I interrupt you again, Karen? Um, uh, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Janet, Paul, do you want to kind of finish this off? <laughs> I'm gonna, we're gonna start by, I just made my little list because we'll be back in December. So we're gonna start by creating profiles and commenting. And I think we're gonna come in to create a story, like start with the six words. So just do those three things. I, and I'm gonna follow your lead, um, mostly because we're also building. So I'm just really looking at this core content and when kids can jump in. And as I create this unit to plan it, I'll just share it out with you all and say, here, this is what I did, you know, how I introduced it. Cause I feel like we need some standalone structure and I need to figure out where I'm gonna post that on my school site. Um, and then Paul, I'm really taking into account of like in between those, cause I meet with them once a week. So what are you doing in between? How can we build that interaction? But the thrill of an international audience was amazing to watch my two kids. They're like, from the, that was, and I said, I didn't know that either. And so there was a lot of value, I guess, guys in sitting side by side with kids and just reading an article and talking, you know, reading what some student wrote and then talk about it and comment together. I learned a lot doing that where I felt like I left them alone last year to do that. And this year there was having the, that's an advantage of COVID, right? You have the, I have these, these smaller groups of kids in breakout rooms or smaller groups that just in general come for help. And I thought, how can I keep doing that? Cause that was a really fun side by side, hey, let's explore. And I see that doing a lot more of that in the next few weeks. Cool. Paul, do you wanna make a quick comment? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Stephanie, then. <laughs> Wait, you're, you're muted, Paul. We didn't hear that, no. <laughs> uh, no. <There> you go. <laughs> <laughs> you good? That. Okay. Just happy to be here. Good. Okay. Thanks. I can hardly wait to see Paul's kids quote things. I've been stalking you. It's amazing. All right. Thank you all. Um, let's keep going. And, uh, you know, if, if I didn't answer your question, I can help with something. Please don't hesitate. Are, are we meeting next week before Thanksgiving? Or are we skipping until the second? I'm sorry. I wasn't here at the beginning. It's good to ask. Um, I can do it. You can't. I can't. No. Okay, let's take a break. Okay, when we break. Okay. Yep. We'll talk. All right. We'll talk the week after. I know. <laughs> Stephanie Loomis, do not say unprecedented one time. Hate that freaking word. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, right. thank you. Yeah, well, it was just for you. And Peggy, <laughs> thank you. Bye, talk guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Great. Bye. Everybody yeah, stay thanks. safe, all right? Bye. Stay Bye. safe. Wash Bye. your hands, wear your mask, keep socially distant, okay? <laughs> yes, my son from the ER just reported from um, actually from um, the ICU in Michigan to me and scared the crap out of me. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, I, my, my daughter, who is a nurse, is doing the same. I'm like, that's that just reiterated my yeah. stay home. All right, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye, -bye. Stay safe. Bye. See you in two weeks. Yep.